be a flash flooding happening as we speak. The rain right smack on top of us, battering Metro Atlanta right now. We're hearing a lot of that right now, the roaring thunder. It's captured on video in Dalton today. You can see the streak of lightning cut through the sky just before the thunder erupts. And blinding rain also making this storm just particularly nasty. This is Birmingham, Alabama, and you can see it coming down so hard. It just blew that trash can over. Anybody caught on the roads in this is going to have a tough time navigating where they're going. And take a look at this rushing water in Alabama washing out a hill. Just look at how fast it's moving. The National Weather Service calling it a flash flood emergency. This is the same storm dumping rain on us right now. We have team coverage tonight with crews checking in on the hardest hit areas. We'll show you all the action live in just a minute. But first, let's go right to our chief meteorologist, Jennifer Valdez, with Atlanta's most accurate forecast. Oh, yeah. And still raining over metro atlanta but the good news is the severe weather threat and that is tornado threat and severe thunderstorm threat has come to an end across north georgia so i'm not expecting strong damaging winds or any rotation but we're still seeing rain and this could lead to additional flash flooding and flooding concerns over the next several hours as the rain continues to fall over metro atlanta most of us seeing moderate showers but we're seeing some bits of heavy rain right now on top of that still seeing some thunder and lightning, but thankfully we're not seeing those strong gusty winds we had earlier today. We did have strong storms moving through south portions of the metro area near the Thomaston area, even severe storms moving through West Georgia, but thankfully those have moved out, but they did bring very heavy rain. Because of that, a flash flood warning in effect for Heard and Troop County. We saw two to three inches of rain in Heard and Troop County just within an hour or two, so flash flooding concerns there. The severe storms are to our south, and this is where they will remain. So although I'm not expecting severe storms, we'll still see rain over the next several hours as the system continues to push out of North Georgia. Because of that, a flash flood watch still in effect until 2 o'clock. And although I'm not expecting any strong gusty winds, we could still see an additional tree down or two causing some power outages just because all of that rain has really weakened the root structure of the trees. Showers and storms continue until about midnight. After that, the rain comes to an end. We will be dry tomorrow. We'll talk about what else to expect tomorrow and when the next chance of rain arrives coming up. Jennifer, thank you. 31,000 and counting. That's how many customers are without power tonight. The storm's knocking down power lines and trees tonight, leaving thousands of people in the dark and more outages still possible as the rain continues. Those who live in Sandy Springs are among those without power tonight. Storms today sent trees crashing down, including into this woman's house. You can see she now has a gaping hole, gaping hole in her ceiling. Let's go to CBS 46's Zach Summers. He's live in Sandy Springs tonight with a look at the damage and what the cleanup they've got ahead of them. Certainly, Sean, you know, we've seen significant tree damage across Sandy Springs. And at this particular home, you don't have just several trees in this yard. They're also inside. From heavy downpours to toppled trees and down power lines. It gets kind of scary because the trees, all the trees around here that fall. Sandy Springs and other parts of Metro Atlanta took a beating from Mother Nature on Tuesday. There were all these huge trees that we have back there going around like this. Reed Sellers watched from her bedroom window as several trees fell into her neighbor's yard, one landing into the living room of the home. The owner was not there at the time. They went. Boom! You know, it was, it, it was frightening. I was scared to death because I really thought it was a tornado. Across town... Nothing short of a miracle. Finn Mintz is thankful his wife, Diana, is alive. It's crazy. The mom of three was about to leave for work when trees started falling around her SUV. My wife was literally standing where that tree was, and I just... something had said just to run into the, you know, get into the car and... Diana jumped to safety as a massive tree crashed right outside her driver door. I had no idea how close I came to getting seriously hurt. Close calls as neighbors count their blessings. I'm very grateful. Yeah, and the fear here tonight, what Jennifer said at the top, with the constant rain oversaturation leading to more toppled trees. Live in Sandy Springs, Zach Summer, CBS 46 News.
This is a brand new video of a massive twister in Mississippi, and you can hear those sirens blaring as the tornado tore through Jackson today. It's a warning some in Douglas County say they wish that they had gotten yesterday before a tornado touched down there. Our team coverage continues with Sierra coming live in Douglasville and Sierra tonight. The county is explaining what went wrong. Yeah, they're saying timing and technology. You know, despite the heavy rain and winds here, folks showed up to the restaurant of Scott Hudson to honor him. He died yesterday in the storms in the community. They're dealing with this devastation, but also frustration after learning about Monday's siren issues. Security video from a Douglasville neighbor shows the tornado's impact near Kings Highway. This was left behind Monday morning, 10-14 right at the time the sirens should have sound. It's pretty scary because usually we get alerts even on our phones and there's nothing. There was no phone alerts, there was no sirens, there was nothing. So really, if it could have been off just by little, we could have all been dead. Nadine Olvera says the very purpose of the alarms is to quickly alert those in danger's path. But Douglas County officials confirmed the silence instead heard across her neighborhood. I think they better get a little better at what they need to do. Leaders blame the issue on timing, saying it all happened so fast. Sirens automatically go off when a tornado warning is issued. But the county explained the National Weather Service had not issued one until seven minutes after reports of tornado sightings, after it had already hit the ground, after King's Highway neighbors say the worst of it had narrowly missed them. That's not cutting it. They have plenty of time to watch the notifications and to do their job. Their neighborhood was spared, but not all of Douglasville. Shirley McDaniel tells us the community is still aching from the loss of beloved restaurant owner Scott Hudson. It always breaks your heart when somebody passes away, especially such a tragic way as that. Neighbor after neighbor calls the missed sirens unacceptable. But they hope this incident sounds an alarm for improved response in the future. Since those have come around, a lot of lives have been saved because people will have time to get safety. Again, county leaders say the issue did not fall on the county. Fortunately, though, those areas that were without the sirens only dealt with minor damage. Live in Douglasville, I'm Sierra Cummings, CBS 46 News. Sierra, thank you. New video just in at 11. Here's a look at just how much rain the system is dumping. Whoa. This video here, look at it, from Birmingham, Alabama, which was hammered by the same line of storms just hours ago. You can see cars at this apartment complex underwater and rescue crews looking for anyone in danger. Also new tonight, a video making the rounds on social media. It shows a trash can drifting away down the street in Little Five Points this afternoon. The water high enough to lift the garbage van off the ground and send it on its way. Bye-bye trash can. A live look at the airport tonight and the nonstop storms causing lots of flight delays. Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport reporting long wait times on the tarmac for flights that are trying to take off. Anyone traveling tonight should check with the airline for any delays. Well, the storms are making cleanup from Monday's severe weather just about impossible. Check out this damage at a warehouse. This is on Fulton Industrial Boulevard near the city of South Fulton. We're told that multiple buildings in that area were hit. CBS 46 returns to the scene tonight. CBS 46's Jamie Kennedy is there. And Jamie, tonight we know more about the path of that tornado. The National Weather Service down here in South Atlanta do really survey the damage and this is the type of damage we're talking about. Trees snapped clean off almost, basically flung around like little toothpicks here. This is the end result. Something like for a tornado such that is like a toothpick that you would use to pick a bit of meat out of your teeth. The destruction continuing on to the buildings around here, this industrial area, ripping off the side of the building. Now the National Weather Service confirming to us that it was an EF1 tornado that came around here and it was 5.8 miles long, 5.8 miles long. It was 400 yards wide and it touched down for roughly 13 minutes and you can see right now it feels like we're under a waterfall. This severe weather continuing to come down, really hampering the cleanup effort. In South Atlanta, Jamie Kennedy, CBS 46 News. Jamie, thank you. New video tonight. Take a look at this showing the intensity of these storms. Touch as gusty winds and heavy downpours snapped this thick tree in half. This was in Roanoke, Virginia.
And now is the time to download the free CBS 46 streaming app. This is a very important tool, especially during this severe weather season. You can take it with you on the go, get weather alerts sent directly to your phone, and know the moment bad weather strikes. The city of Atlanta has a new top cop. Interim Chief Rodney Bryant promoted to the position permanently. He and Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms promising to work together to get crime under control in the city. Most recent crime stats show there have been 208 shootings in Atlanta this year. That's up 51% from last year and 40 homicides, a 60% increase from 2020. We are not in the business of going out and arresting anybody and everybody for the simplest thing. That's not what we do in the city of Atlanta. However, we do recognize that we need to pay attention to repeat offenders, and that's exactly what we're doing today. Chief Bryant says the shooting death of a 15-year-old girl last weekend is at the top of his priority list. Atlanta police now looking for a fourth vehicle possibly involved in the killing. Take a good look. These are the four vehicles possibly involved in the fight that broke out at the Waffle House on Glenwood Avenue. Three people were shot. 15-year-old Diamond Johnson died. Anyone with information is asked to call police. There's a $5,000 reward for information. A crime alert tonight. A manhunt underway for thieves accused of shooting a security guard and trying to steal an armored truck. Atlanta police say the two Brinks employees stopped at Henry's Bakery and Cafe on Marietta Boulevard for food this morning. They were told a black sedan then pulled up. One of the suspects pointed a gun at the Brinks driver and told him to get out. The second Brinks employee that had gone into the deli walked out and shot at the suspects. One suspect returned fire, wounding the security guard in the arm. Both suspects then took off. So far, they have not been found. Capturing criminals on camera. I don't believe that the useful in crime is worth the trade-off to people's privacy and civil liberties. But at what cost? A drug smuggling scheme busted. How a woman tried to hide 40 grand worth of cocaine. Racially insensitive roles. It was a mistake to do the play. A school now apologizes for making kids act like monkeys. And it's still raining across North Georgia after the break. I'll pinpoint when the rain will finally end and what all of this means for tomorrow morning's commute.